Hey everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and in this video I'd like to talk about gnomes. I've talked a bit about gnomes in a few videos now, links in the doobly-doo for more info, but let's attempt to cover them in more depth. It's not a tall subject, and I won't be short with you. I think we can talk about gnomes without being small to one another. Let's dive in. Gnomes are known as the Forgotten Folk. This is because of their somewhat sad history in the Forgotten Realms. They were enslaved by other races for generations, and when finally winning their freedom, gnomes have enjoyed their anonymity and the protection it offers. The gnomes believe they came from gems in the earth. The different gnomes arose from different gems, and this also is to explain their love of gems as well as their urge to make homes in the ground. Diamonds became rock gnomes, emeralds became forest gnomes, and rubies turned into deep gnomes. The head of the gnomish pantheon, Garl Glittergold, found these gnomes and breathed life into them. I like to think they hatched like eggs, but legend says the gems opened like flowers, releasing the first gnomes. Garl Glittergold is a tricky deity that, like his gnome children, loves to pull pranks. The gnomes were first enslaved by the kobolds, and legend says that Garl Glittergold tricked the kobold deity Kurtolmek, collapsing the earth around him and trapping him in an endless underground maze. This freed the gnomes, but kobolds and gnomes have had a strong hatred for one another ever since. Gnomes were also slaves in ancient civilizations such as Netheril and Kalimshan. Gnomes are industrious, intelligent, and good-natured. Despite the kobolds, they have few enemies and live life keeping a low profile. They avoid larger folk with their magic and empires, keeping instead to tiny, out-of-the-way settlements. Gnomes in this sense are rather boring, and their history doesn't have much to it. They didn't conquer any areas of Faerun, they didn't fight in any great wars. This is why they are often referred to as the Forgotten Folk. They were always present in the Forgotten Realm's history, but never in focus, never in the forefront of story. Gnomes average slightly over three feet tall and can weigh 40 to 45 pounds and can live up to five centuries. Although this height, weight, and lifespan can differ with different sub-races of gnomes, that we'll get into later. They love life and cherish every moment they have, not often taking up an adventuring path. The gnome that starts their adventure will squeeze as much enjoyment out of it as possible. Gnomes love jokes, pranks, and puns, but can be very dedicated to their more serious tasks. This makes them excellent inventors, tinkerers, alchemists, and engineers. There are three types of gnomes, deep gnomes, forest gnomes, and rock gnomes. Deep gnomes are the gray-skinned gnomes that live in the Underdark. Many often think they are evil, like the Underdark cousins of dwarves or elves, but the Snurfeblin, as they are known, are just as friendly as their surface counterparts. Note, though, the Underdark has hardened them to outsiders. Knowing they can't trust the Duergar or the Drow, many deep gnomes keep to themselves. Much of the deep gnome history is lost. They don't keep records, instead living in the moment. Because of this, there have been many deep gnome cities that are scattered throughout the Underdark, but they become abandoned when needed and new ones will spring up. The most famous deep gnome city is Blingdenstone, founded in negative 690 DR. There is information on this city because of a famous renegade drow that lived with the deep gnomes for a while before making Making his way to the surface and Mithril Hall. Forest gnomes are very shy and reclusive. Many larger folk will discover them nearby only to learn that they've been living in the area for centuries. These particular gnomes go to great lengths to be quiet and avoid contact with others. They have a great love of nature and often stay in large forests away from civilization. These gnomes prefer to be left alone. Not having a detailed history, it's hard to say the impact of forest gnomes have had on the Forgotten Realms. It's possible that numerous forests and beasts were saved by their silent and sneaky intervention. Sadly, no history books tell the brave tales of the forest gnomes. Forest gnomes are not distrustful of others and only wish for you to enjoy the forest as they do. They are often surprised when others have an interest in them as they don't fancy themselves as anything special. But it might be that very attitude towards themselves and their surroundings that make them truly someone to admire. Few forest gnomes take up adventuring. Not calling themselves an adventurer, they still might thwart an evil plot and protect others and their forest home. If left with the possibility, they'd much rather stay at home in peace. While staying home, they do take up craftsmanship and become expert in those skills. Forest gnomes make excellent bards, druids, even clerics, but few gnomes consider themselves warriors. Seeing a ranger or a fighter forest gnome would be something unusual for sure. Rock gnomes are the gnomes most people in Faerun are familiar with. These gnomes are an inquisitive people that can be found all over Faerun as technicians, alchemists, and inventors. As do all gnomes, they have an uncanny sense with illusion magic and make wonderful illusionist wizards. Rock gnomes enjoy life in all its ways, from work to play to study. It's the process and the journey that are important to a rock gnome, not necessarily the goal. These gnomes are counted as one of the major races of Faerun, despite being in less population than elves, dwarves, or humans. There has never been a gnome, empire, or even a country, but if the rock gnomes have had a homeland, it would be the islands of Lantan. 
Lantan lies north of the Cholten Peninsula and is home to the largest population of gnomes in Faerun. It is an island of wondrous invention and bustling commerce. It was here that Gond, the god of invention, appeared to the world as a gnome. Many young rock gnomes took this as a sign that it was time for the gnomes to invent a new way of life, to solidify themselves within Faerun's history. Lantan is also home to the invention of smoke powder, which is basically gunpowder. This created weapons that have the power of a wizard but take little skill and understanding to master. The secret was given to them by Gond for sheltering him during the time of troubles. It's banned by many cities, but the Church of Gond in Lantan freely manufactures smoke powder. And that's it for today. Gnomes are fun, and I think you could have have a great time being an atypical gnome such as a forest gnome ranger, possibly a beast master with a badger friend. You could even ride your pet as a mount. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon that keep these videos going, and if you'd like to become a patron, click the link in the description for more information. And if you're interested, we also have Forgotten Realms Explained shirts and Jordan University hoodies for sale. Again, links in the doobly-doo. Thanks so much for watching and sharing these videos with your gaming group, and I will see you all in the next video. 